Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Minecraft how-to video. Now, the nether. It's not some place we all enjoy going, but it is a place that we do need to go, and the nether portal is the only way to get there. Now, if you want to have a nice, beautifully designed world in Minecraft, obviously you're going to need to decorate your nether portal as well. And what better way to do that with some of these designs that I have concocted here? I've created five places you can put your nether portal in your open world uh, in order to have a nice little flair for when you enter and exit the nether. I'm going to rank each of these builds in terms of difficulty of receiving materials as well as difficulty of actually building. So strap in and enjoy. First of our designs is one that I created a long time ago and is the perfect place for the creepy atmosphere of the nether. We are using a graveyard crypt design. This is one that I have recently touched up and added some more details to uh, in order to make it look better for you guys. This build is 25 by 13 blocks, so it's one of the larger builds that we'll be going over today. In terms of blocks, I'd say this is probably a 3 or a 4 out of 5 uh, in terms of block difficulty. We need stone bricks, stairs and slabs, mossy stone bricks, cobblestone, and mossy cobblestone, as well as stone stairs, an iron shovel for path blocks, soul soil, soul fire lanterns, grass or dirt blocks, and dark oak signs. Or I'd say this is a 4 or a 3 out of 5 because mossy cobblestone and mossy stone bricks do need some vines in order for you to get. So, unless you live near a swamp or a jungle biome, that's going to be a little difficult to find. Also, soul soil and soul fire lanterns can be difficult to get slash make if you spawn in the wrong biome in the nether. So, good luck finding those as well. Other than that, materials shouldn't be too difficult to acquire. So let's go into actually building the build. In terms of actually building this design, I'd say it's probably a 2 out of 5 in terms of difficulty. It's one of the larger builds, yes, but in terms of actually designing this, it's not too hard. In the inside of our graveyard slash crypt area, we have the graveyard itself. We have three different columns that I have sectioned off, as you can see. A three wide column for the graves a 5 wide column for path, and another 3 wide column for more graves. The graves themselves are easy to make. They're 4 blocks by 1 block wide. It's just stone stairs with a dark oak sign on the front, soul soil in front of it, and an empty grass block in front of that. Create 6 of those on either side of your path, and there you have your graves. Now wall the entire thing off while interchanging cobblestone and mossy cobblestone. Then in the back we have our crypt design, which is made using the mossy bricks and stone bricks. Our roof and detailing was made using cobblestone uh, and mossy cobblestone. And overall, it's fairly easy to make. As you can see, you can get a quid, uh, pretty good idea of the shape of the crypt slash tomb uh, just from flying around. The inside is lit up with a soul fire lantern, and we have a nice big nether portal on the inside as well. These lamp posts are made similarly using cobblestone and mossy cobblestone with stone bricks and mossy stone brick slabs hanging over with a soul fire lantern hanging out from underneath that. Make two of those. Then for the front gate, uh, similar in design. It's more mossy and cobblestone walls with soul fire lanterns hanging out on either side. Then you use stone bricks and mossy stone brick slabs and stairs in order to create the front arch design. Overall, this is a fairly large yet also fairly simple build and design for your nether portal. Acquiring the blocks might be a little difficult, but in terms of overall design, it's not too hard to make, and it looks quite good. For our second atmosphere, imagine if you will that you have decided to place your house right next to a mountain cliff face. Well, in that case, then the nether cave is going to be the perfect location for your nether portal. The nether cave is only 13 by 13 blocks, meaning it is one of the smaller builds that we'll be going over today, uh, and it's fairly easy to make as well. The blocks that you will need are stone, stone stairs and slabs, cobblestone stairs, slabs and walls, oak slabs, oak fences, netherrack, an iron shovel, and lanterns. 
In terms of actually getting these materials, it shouldn't be too hard. I'd say this is only a one or two out of five in terms of difficulty. Sure, stone may be difficult to get, but that's more of a time thing, if anything else. Cobblestone is easy to get because it's abundant. Oak uh, is also very easy to get. And because you're going to the nether, nether rack is a plenty there. Lanterns require a little bit of iron, and really you can use any type of shovel to make path blocks, not just iron shovels. In order to create your nether cave, just create a nice wide open area inside your mountain, then round off the ceiling and walls using stone stairs and slabs. Add some cobblestone just for variety of blocks, that way it breaks up the build and adds some nice changes in color. For lighting, I decided to use lanterns, just place a few throughout your build. I also added this nice little lamp post using the oak slabs and fences that I mentioned earlier. To create the entrance to your cave, it's fairly simple. You want to start narrow and then slowly widen your entrance the further you go out. You can do this by adding some stone stairs and slabs as well as cobblestone uh, throughout your build in order to add more changes in variety of blocks. The path is fairly simple. Randomly uh, click on blocks with your shovel in order to create the path. Move back and forth as you get to your portal. Then you use the nether rack, uh, as I mentioned earlier. When you get close to your portal, the closer you get to the portal, the more nether rack you want to use uh, on your path. That way it makes it look like the nether is kind of spilling out into our world. Difficulty wise, this build shouldn't be too hard to make. Clearing out the cave might take a little bit of time, but overall this build is probably a 2 out of 5 at most. Our next design takes advantage of some natural terrain generation. What I mean by that is we are going to be making the nether pond. Now the overworld spawns plenty of ponds, not all of them look great, so why not decorate them by adding a nether portal and a nice little path leading up to it. This design I made using also a 13 by 13 wide pattern. Block difficulty wise, this is probably a one or two out of five at most. Lily pads might be the most challenging thing to get if you don't live near a swamp. Other than that, things shouldn't be too difficult to get uh, or find. To create your design, you want to have your nether portal at the one end of your pond. I'd add a wall behind it using stone and the grass or dirt blocks that I mentioned earlier, just to make it look like it was uh, kind of placed into the terrain behind it. To create a path across the pond, you use some cobblestone slabs, lily pads, and as we get closer to the nether portal, some more nether rack. You can light up the place by using some oak fences and torches on top, kind of making this tiki torch looking pattern, uh, which looks quite good. Then next to the portal, you can light it up using some regular torches as well. Difficulty wise, this is probably a one out of five to make. If you're using natural terrain, uh, then this is really, really easy. It doesn't take much uh, difficulty at all. All you have to do is really just find a good pond to place your nether portal and kind of maybe terraform a little bit in the terrain around it. If you're making this by hand, the pond itself probably isn't too hard to make. I'd say it's a two out of five if you're making this without natural terrain generation. Atmosphere wise, this design may be the most appropriate for the nether portal. That's because we are placing it on top of a lava pool. Lava pools also occasionally spawn on the surface of the overworld, but they also spawn deep in caves, so you can place this nether portal on either one of those, either deep in caves or in the surface of the overworld. In terms of blocks you will need, it's pretty simple in terms of blocks. I'd say a one or two out of five at most. All you need is grass or dirt blocks, stone, stone stairs and slabs, cobblestone stairs, slabs and walls, and lava. Building it is fairly simple uh, from the first look of things. All you have to do is build this kind of nice stone platform arching out over the lava. Uh, I used stone, the stone stairs, and the stone slabs in order to make this. Also add some cobblestone just for variety of blocks. Make sure you add a nice little wall on the back that way you don't you know, come out of the nether portal on the wrong side and fall into the lava below. While the blocks you gather for this aren't going to be too hard to find, uh, building this might be a little more challenging. I'd say this is probably a 3 or 4 out of 5 in terms of building, just because it's so dangerous to work with lava. You could easily risk falling into the lava when building this. 
so be very careful if you decide to make this. Otherwise, it's going to look really cool uh, for your nether portal to be floating above some lava. Our last design of the day may look the most challenging at first, but trust me, it's probably a lot easier than you think it is. Our last design is a nether portal inside of a giant dead tree stump. Size-wise, this is easily the largest of all of our builds today, 32 by 34 blocks. However, block-wise, it shouldn't be too hard to get. All you need are oak wood, not planks, oak wood, stripped oak wood, stripped birch wood, spruce stairs, spruce slabs, spruce fences, grass, coarse dirt, and shovels for making path blocks. Also, torches to light the interior. Blocks-wise, this is probably a 2 out of 5, because all the blocks you need are just really wood. Uh, so you might have to do a little bit of world exploration to find some of these blocks, but once you get that out of the way, it shouldn't be too hard to make. What you want to do is create a giant circle outline for your tree stump, then build that up 5 or 6 blocks. The tree stump doesn't have to be even in terms of the circle. In fact, uh, having an irregular circle such as the one I have here uh, can look quite good as well. Then you want to use your birch and oak stripped wood uh, to kind of make this circular pattern. That way it looks like there are these rings in the tree. After that, the roots are probably the most challenging thing to build. What you want to do is create a, create a long line of wood kind of squiggling out from the main tree stump, then slowly angle it as you build upwards toward the, toward the tree, then widen it slowly as you get towards the base of the tree stump. I'll show you guys what I mean. Let's say this is our tree stump that we've built up. Not very big, but, you know, it does the job. What we want to do now is, like I said, kind of add this, you know, squiggly line pattern coming out from our tree stump. Now we want to build up the tree uh, root as it gets closer to the actual trunk of the tree. Now slowly thicken it from the side just a little bit at a time. And repeat on the other side. And there you go, you have one very simple root. After that, what you want to do is kind of add some spruce wood, uh, specifically the slabs and stairs, kind of, you know, throughout the the, uh, the roots. That way you have some nice block variation. Don't add too many, otherwise it's going to be overwhelming. But uh, the spruce looks very similar to the oak wood in color, but it is just different enough so that you have a nice little bit of color variation. Also, it kind of smooths out the design of the root. Then on the inside, what you want to do is create walls based off of the ceiling block. So if the top block right here is stripped oak wood, then I want oak wood there. If it's birch wood, then I'm going to want birch wood coming down. Repeat that until you have a nice large room. Uh, then light the interior using your torches and add your nether portal on one of the walls. I've made it look like the tree stump has grown back over the nether portal a bit. I feel like that's a fairly nice little design. For your path, it's fairly simple. On the inside, use plenty uh, of coarse dirt. Go very heavy on the coarse dirt. Uh, then add some path blocks throughout, and very few places should you add some grass. Then as you move to the outside, use less and less of the coarse dirt and more and more of the path blocks while using the, about the same amount of grass blocks. Then create your entrance using some spruce slabs and fences, and that's more or less it. Building-wise, this is probably a 4 out of 5, so it is uh, definitely more challenging than some of the other builds, but it's also a lot more time-consuming than some of the other builds, and also more resource-heavy, I would say. You're going to have to use a lot of oak wood in order to actually get this. Don't forget to go resource gathering before you make this. You don't want to be grinding for resources in the middle of actually building this. And that's going to do it for today's video. If you guys want some designs on the inside of your house, I'll be making that video soon as well, so stick around for that. I hope you all enjoyed and learned something today. If you did, don't forget to leave a like or dislike down below. Uh, leave a comment, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're interested, uh, or even follow me on Twitter for notifications about when I stream or upload. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. See you later.